Hello everybody, welcome to the show. Bass and Bonsai, doing it again. Had to come right back out here to see if the bite was still on, and it's still on. So buckle up and hang on, sit back and relax. It's gonna be a good one. We are right back at the scene of the crime. But seriously, last week we were here, I thought what might be my final trip of the season overall true fishing trip i you know figured i'd get out a couple days here and there but i got onto this crazy insane bite uh fishing before the storm if you haven't seen that video where have you been anyway go check it out but i started tearing them up on these worms and z-man makes them and these are the older uh zero z2s because the last tech uh z-man used to be with strike king basically and then they branched out on their own is what I think happened but if you haven't watched that video what happened was I only didn't realize I didn't have this other pack I just you know usually Z-Man products you only need a couple packs last you like months but I narrowed down because a couple weeks before that I've been catching them also it's gonna start sprinkling on us but I only had one pack in the boat which was only actually three worms left so one bass shook that worm off then I had two worms. Well, then I broke off twice like a dummy. I tried pulling one up and on 10 pound test after not checking the line after catching a bunch, lost that bass. And then I got hung up in the cover, lost or lost that bass and the bait, got hung up in the cover, broke off, lost the last one. So I checked around everywhere. Finally, I found my other pack where I'd left it with my other soft plastics because I, I just can't bring it all in this little old boat. But I found a resource online, if you guys have, don't know about it, uh, it's called uh, Fishing Online and it's highlighted fish on uh, store. That place, I ordered four more packs and they, I didn't bring them all with me because I didn't need to. But they rang out and within just two days, I tracked down that store on Wednesday, ordered them, I had them a uh, Friday afternoon. It did cost me, I think, $8 to ship them, but they're only like $3.50 or $4 a pack. The only other place I found them, I think I found these on Amazon, but they're like $9 a pack on Amazon. But anyway, you can find them in some stores still like this. They still have some supplies left or, you know, in the traditional Z-Man packaging. Purple haze is the color. Anyway, the amazing way this bait was working last weekend is the reason I'm out here this weekend. It's cold. Uh, water temps have dropped again. If you remember right, they went from 80 something, 84 or so. Within a week or two, they were down to 71, 72 or so last week. They're all the way down to 63 this week. It, it's fall, it's getting colder. This is October 3rd, I think. Anyway, we're gonna get out here and see if we can get on that bite again, or if not, find another bite. You know, what did the fish do as that water temperature's dropping? This is really to help you guys, not so much for this year, by the time you see this video, it'll be too late, but for next year, that kind of stuff. And I do recommend that, whether it be me, Tactical Bassin, or whatever shows you watch on YouTube, go back and watch the last year's videos, the ones that have been established for a while, and see what they were recommending, you know, kind of in advance of when you're going out. But that's what I recommend. Anyway, let's buckle up and hang on. It's starting to sprinkle. I may go sit in the truck a little bit, because it's supposed to clear up and then get back out here, because it is cold today. Uh, like I said, water temp 62. It's only like 48, 50 degrees right now, and I do not want to be wet. You guys see this. me? It's raining a little bit, but I came to fish, so I put the bimini top up, and I'm going to get rigged up because, I, like I said, I broke off last time I was out here. We're going to go to the same spot because it's almost the same conditions other it's a lot colder one week later. So I am out of... I got these in, but they were out of anywhere I looked for the VMC finesse rugby jigs so this is just a rugby jig and remember that head's a little different so they are harder I've dremeled them down a little bit but they are harder to get a snap in or just tie on the normal line but I'm gonna get one of these guys rigged up with that worm and we're gonna go right back over here and see if we can't catch us some largemouth and stay dry all right I got a bunch of different stuff rigged up but I'm just gonna throw this worm that was working around now I have to remember I'm setting down and I got this thing so the hook sets have to be as a first cast. Can't get a good solid hook set. But first cast with this worm 
in a bass, just like that. Wow. That one's been caught before. That little guy, just don't learn. That's what we love about our bass and why we catch and release them. They just don't learn and you can catch them again. Let's go. To get real wet and cold, I'm trying to stay as dry as I can. Got another one, little guy. Right at the boat. There's a little one right there. So anyway, it's just now about 10 a.m. So until I catching little ones right off the bat. They're real shallow, they're right up against that bank. Okay. About. We are already on the board. I'm gonna be real honest. This is not my favorite or definitely not the funnest way to fish, but I mean, you gotta, whatever it takes, right? To get out there and get on some fish. I've kind of made myself become a, over the years, you know, when I first started fishing, everybody, you know, you're, it's hard to slow down and fish a worm. You know, especially as the bite gets tougher, you tend to keep trying everything else, and I still do that. I'll still go out and throw like everything else in my box before I do a worm. But you know, once you get on a worm bite and you like just keep riding it out, I mean, you'll kind of understand that. Why well, you'll see some guys? That's all they say they ever throw, because it usually always works. It's just not always the fastest way to catch them. So, I definitely like to throw a, you know, rattle trap, chatterbait, uh, square bill, a couple different style of cranks, move them faster, and if that bite kicks in and is working, I'll usually just stay with it, unless they're real small fish. But then if I try the worms and other stuff, and it, you know, the fish don't get any bigger, I'll typically go back to that faster, you know, what I call more fun bite. I don't know if I could be catching any on top water right now. I still haven't seen anything on my depth finder as far as fish. But this bank seems to be loaded up with these little guys. And I may throw that popper real quick. See if I could just catch some on the top water. They're getting smaller. Let's just try that real quick. So I'm hoping you can actually make out what I've got going on here. But we kind of figured out there's definitely little ones up on the bank. I'm gonna to try to make the most fun out of it. So I got my lightest rod, BFS combo, favorite way to fish, which is a popper and this little Sonora popper off AliExpress. Can usually always get hit. Come on. Oh, got him. I did not set the hook at all. He may come right off. That little dude nailed it. I could not. I was so close to the this uh, bar. I just started reeling, kind of set the hook with the reel. That's all I could do. Now that was fun. It's a little bitty guy, but that is a lot more fun than on worm bite with little ones anyway. Close enough in where I can start casting. You know, figure out what depth they're at. Nothing. On this bank, anyway, seems to be up there shallow. Okay, we're about close enough. I'm going to start deep since I've got the cover to throw to. throw right out to that cover where our bite was coming from somewhere between you know say 20 foot out to out at that piece is where most of our fish were coming all around that area. So I'm gonna try to get one within yeah like right that's gonna be right beside it. I'm gonna let that sink and I'm gonna pull it by so count about eight should be close to being on bottom and then just pick up the slack until I fill it and be ready a lot of times you pick up the slack you'll instantly feel something's got it so I'm just 
going to start doing the old shaky shake right up beside that piece and I got one there there oh he's coming up he's not big but we got a fish right beside that piece of cover He ain't as big as what we were catching last week. But oh, he's beautiful. And he's there on that cover. Mwah! Let's see if we can catch another one. Think bigger, boys and girls. Okay, we got one off the cover. Other than that one popper fish, we don't have... Uh, this bait has been the main... Now, I'm showing something right under this boat again. Every time I get up in here, there's usually one or two right here. I mean, you can count, however, roughly a foot a second, so it's about 10, 12 foot deep. Count to 10. Should be close to bottom. Start doing the old shaky shake. Got another one. Going out. Bigger fish. On oh, that cover still. The bite is still here. I don't know how many we'll catch, but that's two right off that spot. This one may get off. I didn't get a great hook set. He was coming at me. I'm just going to hold him and see where that hook is. Oh, that's a nice. That's a giant right on the top of the... That is a nice bass. I don't know why I'm whispering. Look at that fish. I cannot tell how good he's hooked. I'm gonna better not come up. I'll try to get him over here. I normally like to watch him jump, but I didn't get hooks there. But it was in there, man. Mwah. Woo! Look at that. The bite is still here. The bite is still here big fish on this worm. I don't know for sure exactly what's what. I may need to sw switch out colors just to see, but I'm telling you guys, look at that over three pound bass. Wow. Okay, boys and girls, let's see if this sucker's gonna jump. This is a beautiful bass. Somebody's saying weigh that fish, and I'm thinking two and a half, maybe not quite three. Okay, since you guys asked, we're gonna weigh it. Zeroed out, well, it says negative one. Just remember that, it says negative one. Ooh, three pounds one, so about three pounds, two ounces. Just over three pound largemouth bass. That's originally what I called it, and I thought it was a little lighter, but let's see if it's gonna jump. That's what we're worried about now. We've caught old girl, beautiful bass. That water feels cold now. I think the jumping days are done for this winter or summer spring, fall, whatever you want to call it. Come on, girl. Oh, don't y'all get me wet. It's 55 degrees outside. All right, boys and girls. We are on a bike and I'm getting wet, which is not good, but I'm actually not cold. This worm is still working. That piece of cover if you guys haven't checked out the other video, check it out. My best fishing day ever. I don't know if this day's gonna you know get close to it, but we're already off to a great start. Two weeks ago now, I put that piece of cover out here. I came back last week and just flat tore them up in this general area from that cover to the bank. So check out that video. But today, oh yeah, we thrown twice there now, got fished both times. We're not gonna stop now. Okay, before I get ahead of myself, I've caught two fish out of here, so I feel that there's probably more to be caught, but I'm gonna try a couple other worms just to see if, it, if it's that color. Now, I went through a lot of trouble in looking and, and ordering to, to get that exact, whoa, that exact color worm back for this weekend. And it's worked, but I just wanted to see if, you know, color's that big a deal or if they'll almost hit any worm or the sprayed grass one again, because I do have several of those. So I'm gonna give this worm a couple shots, maybe even a crawdad or something out here, maybe even a uh, TRD, just to see if I 
you know kind of just see if it's a soft plastic bite on the bottom or if it's got to be that specific and kind of so we'll know if that's the case or not I'm still a firm believer I guess I should say that man sometimes colors you know sometimes weight in the fall or just how fast aggressively you can work it without it like lifting way off the bottom so you know heavier bait you don't want it to dig in too deep but you want it to you know kind of stay down on the bottom but I think more so than anything a lot of times color can just come into play whether it be worms crawdads even chatterbait I just had days where one color steps up and it seems like you're catching them on that one I've done a video with the chatterbaits up the reservoir at black and blue one uh, I did a blade thing too and it didn't really seem to matter which blade I had on but a black and blue a skirt with the black and blue trailer is what caught almost all the fish. I threw like a natural green colored one Nothing. I think I threw a white one. Nothing. All right right here is the exact cast I've made So anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing today. I'm kind of you know a little more research just to tell myself And I mean there's granted there's some days wherever you're throwing you hit that spot where the fish are and they're, eat, they're eating what you're throwing at them no matter what it is a lot of times Sometimes they get finicky. Sometimes they are down to a specific size, action, color. If you can get on that, the bite could be insane. That's kind of what happened to us last weekend. Nope, that is a big fish. Color. Whoa, that is a monster, boys. That's the biggest of the day. I'm backing the boat up. Get up. That is a good one. That is a sprayed grass, which is worth... Oh. Oh, nice. Nice bass. This is the bigger rod. I got 15 pound leader. This is the 803 with the uh, MGL Aldebaran. Oh, we just passed over something right there. I know I got a big fish on, but I want to show you guys. You see that, what we're just now passing over? Right on top of the boat. So right out here, I'm going to have to throw out here too. Oh my goodness. Let's get this bass in. Get over here, big girl. You're the biggest of the day for sure. Oh, my thumb is tore up from last week and it's still sore. Mm. Color. I may have went through all that trouble for no reason, but I needed them anyway. That color does work. But this is what was tearing them up a couple weeks ago. So far, I guess it doesn't matter color. That thing's got a tail. It's definitely whacked. Can't tell if this bass been caught or not before. That, boys and girls, is how you do it. We caught another giant. My thumb is, I'm gonna have to put on some kind of glove because my thumb is tore up from last week. I know there's people, oh, sissies wear gloves and this and that, but when you got on a big bite and then you're back on it the next week and you've got tender spots on your hand, there ain't no shame in wearing a glove. Three, eight, three and a half pound largemouth bass. I could tell it was dev. I thought it was way bigger, but I could tell it was definitely bigger than that three pounder. So they're getting bigger. That is a good sign. Let's go. Let's we'll stay off that hot spot. We're going to hit it until she stops. All right, one last look. Giant, beautiful, largemouth bass. Let's see if this baby's going to jump. What do you guys think? Huh? Do we have a jumper? Do we, do we, do we, do we, huh? Oh no, violent head shake. All that on the very first GoPro battery, boys and girls. 
Now I do have the same exact, and that's just a green head, not a big difference, but eighth ounce VMC rugby finesse. No, wait, this is just a rugby jig. The finesse one's the one that has a better eye that I like, but these do work. I've had to dremel out that a little bit to make it where my clips clip in. But I did down on several. But that is the rod and reel we're using. This is definitely not a BFS. This is a, more of a just a finesse setup. But the 803 is considered a medium heavy and it's got power. Like, you know, I didn't feel, I got 15 pound braid to a 15 pound leader. So I definitely got confidence once I do hook, you know, a big fish that Unless it spits the hook, I'm probably not going to lose that fish. Bad habit I have and cost me last week is not checking the line. Fifteen pounds not as important as say, you know, ten and less. You get any little, you feel anything, or sometimes it's a good idea to switch it out after so many fish, just to make sure or retie the knot anyway, at least. But this combo is an awesome combo for that next step up. It's still what I call finesse, and they call it a medium heavy. But I, for worm fishing, it lets you, with the, with the MGL anyway, you've got this uh, MGL 30 Aldebaran on it. I can finesse fish with this medium heavy. I can throw finesse type lightweight baits, get them wherever I want to place them. But then when I set that hook, now I still have the drag set loose enough. You know, that's not a real thick wire hook. But I can get a good hook set and plenty of power to work the fish and everything I'm just trying it because that color did work now before I go any further before I go any further I'm gonna throw this real quick that is the same color but on the bobble, wobble blah, 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 broken neck whatever head thing you want to talk about that's the key tech I just want to see if this thing will actually you know get out there and do something so I'm gonna throw it right there let it sink down I don't care if it's pulled just a hair because I was almost too close to that cover. And I'm going to give this thing a shot real quick. Now this is on my heavy action. That's 15. I do not like this braid though. I think it's a little on the weak side, but it, it should be good enough for what we got. I got the drag pretty loose. As long as I don't go crazy and put my thumb on it trying anything, I shouldn't break this line either. We're going to do it the same way. Just let it sink all the way bottom and I'm just going to kind of pull it almost like I would a shaky head. I might drag it a little more than I would a shaky head. Just see if, because this is scented too, if you guys believe in scents and all that kind of stuff. back up also and find that piece of cover we went across. I'm going to drop it straight down to it. That's one thing last week I was able to drop almost straight down or go across where there was a fish and then go right back to it and hit it. There's a hit. There's another one. They're still there and they're hitting any of these soft plastics on bottom today. another solid fish nice one. Oh yes wow it's another solid two pounder two and a half that's probably two and a half oh wait he's got my worm in his mouth that's the one i lost last week come here look at this guys look at this oh my god i get it back look at this mm. <laughs> i haven't i haven't lost any baits today last week i lost this worm this is amazing. Look at that. Look at that. I've seen it happen before. You see guys do it. This is the one that broke off. I was trying to boat flip. I remember how it's hooked. It was hooked outside the mouth. So it's been swimming around for a week like that. I got this back. Plenty capable to fish. That's freaking awesome. So that shows you a couple things that the fish will hit again. Now he may not hit that actual purple worm, but we threw that crowd out out there. That is freaking awesome, man. Totally awesome, dude. I know I'm going way back to the 80s. That one, you remember I was trying to boat flip with 10 pound test after catching a bunch? That's the fish right there. I'm not even going to weigh him. You deserve to just be set free. I'm going to call him two and a half pounds. See how he's kind of skinny? 
That's probably close to three once he's filled out. Let's get this sucker turned back loose. That was awesome. Get out there. Get out there. Woo! He's trying to get on my hook again. We are on fire. I don't care what you say, who you are. We are on fire here at Bass and Bonsai. We done got our bait back. We could have come out here today. We didn't even need to buy any more zinkers. We could just come out here and get them out of fish's mouth. Look at that worm. Still perfectly good because I just rigged it up. I think that was a just a few fish onto that one because you might remember that one threw it completely off. I had to go back to the truck. That's one of the newer styles. There's my little clip. Broke. You can also see right where it broke because it started to get frayed just above. The knot didn't break. The knot held. But it had enough fish on it, it weakened the line right before the knot. That's awesome. Cut that off. I got that baby. I'm just going to set it down. It's ready to go at any time. Let's get back up out of this spot. I'm going to hit one more time right by that thing, and then I'm going to start working my way back this way. But I want to make sure that I've basically got all that bait. The wind blew me right beside it. I didn't want to be quite that close. Let me throw past it. Oh! Right up by it right there. I'm going to hold my rod down let that so the wind don't blow me closer to it. That's about right where I want to be and come past that cover on this side. I, I hit it on the other side and it doesn't seem to be as lucky. Now I may hit it one time on that side before we move to this area. Hit. Oh. oh, I still got him. He's coming hard at me. Wow. That was crazy. He's coming right at us. Another nice bass. Purple hate. I'm backing up. Another solid chunk. Look at that fish. Wow. Look at that chunker. Another solid bass right in that same spot. I got to give it to that BMC. That thing just flat out hooks them. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. I got to give it to that BMC hook, guys. I, I, I was, I think, asleep on that one. That sucker hooked him, though. That is probably another two and a half close to three. You want to weigh one more? before he loses anyway. It's starting to sprinkle again. This one is about the size of the one that had the worm in its mouth from last time. 212, so over two and a half, close to three. Very close to three, really. Four or five ounces, all, not, you know, over two and a half. Beautiful, mm, large mouth bass. On purple haze again. I'm gonna see if she's gonna jump. That one was a jumper. I didn't even try it, I just let it go quick. So we're gonna try this guy. Nope. We are on him. It's kind of the same conditions, just a lot colder than last week. We got you know kind of a not really a storm front, just rain's kind of set in, cloud cover. And where a lot of times you'd normally think, especially in warmer water, that top water bite would be what's going. But man, they are 
loaded up out here in this deeper water. So, until we can't catch them anymore, we're just gonna keep catching. Okay, this bite slowed down. I'm not giving, I haven't given up on this spot, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through here real slow. And we're gonna look on the depth finder of what's going on like directly over this spot. It looks like it's still holding fish. I got the troll motor on one. I'm just gonna try to go through slowly. But I'm gonna show you guys so you can see also as we just drift through here what it looks like. And I'm just watching to see what is going on on all these screens. You know, I'm watching this one to see directly what we're under, but then this one I'm looking at to see if there's anything up shallower. Okay, so there's that stick sticking up in the brush. I know it doesn't show a lot, but if I see any big bumps, it shows me there's probably something big still there. This gives a better view. See that tree right through there? And it looks like, to me, I would guess there's still a fish or two on it. So we're gonna go on down. So yeah, there's. I don't think there's as much activity as there was last week. Okay, everybody, with that fish, that last little guy, I'm gonna put an end to this video. I haven't fished quite two hours yet, but I'm gonna put an end to this. If I catch any more on these worms, I will go back and hit that spot again. But if you don't see me again in this video, it's because nothing was hitting there. If they hit, I'll put them on the end of this video. But I'm a, I, you know how the deal goes. I like to put an end to them early in case some crazy stuff goes on and my outros suck. But we just caught the little one doing the same thing we were up there that seems to be way better than this but I'm gonna finish hitting this on the windy side but then I'm gonna go up in the shallows put together a different video then hit that spot after I've let it rest so I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish I actually got a bait back in the process but I want to come back out here 10 degrees colder water temps the same bite was there but you know like I said we hit it pretty hard the week before and uh, just put that cover there so this worm still works, purple haze. I'm hoping to find other spots that's gonna work. I'll attach them to the end of this. But anyway, just get out there. Sometimes it, the temperatures will change a lot, but they'll still be right where you've caught them before. So don't be afraid to hit the same spots or fish the same way just to try it from week to week. Because what I've got on out here, as we're going into fall and winter, I'm gonna stop fishing until spring. At some point, I may hit a day here and there, but my like weekend fishing every weekend is about totally done I, it was going to be done last weekend this weekend it happens to be nice enough and i was on so good of a bite i had to come back out and try it again uh, went through a lot to get those worms so i'd have that color caught them on a couple other colors but this is probably my last weekend i'm getting into rc racing again we've been doing it for a month or so again and i'll be putting videos together but not really out on the water fishing i've got a lot of different uh, comparison shootouts I can do at the house uh, talk about end of the year you know my top five you know baits and rod and reels and all that kind of stuff and what you should do to prepare for you know the next season coming uh, especially if you're gonna be ordering stuff off Aliexpress that stuff takes forever but uh, fishing online store that place is legit I'd never heard of it before spotted it got those uh, purple haze shipped to me with just in a couple days it cost me it's normal shipping was like four bucks and it cost eight so like doubled the shipping to get it two days but it was there in two days a lot of times you'll try to get something in two days and it takes three or four but and it, it paid off i caught 